All right, YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Listen, guys, if this is your first time seeing my channel, this is your first time coming across my content, please hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, give this video a thumbs up, drop me some love in the comment section. Listen, guys, today we're going to kick this one off a little different. Uh, I'm up in Connecticut right now. Y'all see my rig in the background. I figure this will be the perfect time to answer to this question. I get this question asked in my comment section a lot especially from you Connecticut guys. Um, I don't live in Connecticut anymore. I do live in North Carolina, but um, anytime I have to get work done on my truck, I always bring my truck back to Connecticut. So the question I always come across in my comment section is, who works on your truck? So today, I'm gonna answer that question. So if you ever come up here to see my mechanic, these are the type of trucks you're gonna see in the parking lot. This is a beautiful 389 right here. That's a beautiful truck right there, guys. Flat top. So here's another beautiful 389 right here. This one looks like it's specked out for heavy hauling. It's got the third axle back there. That's a beautiful truck. This is where I get all my major work done on my truck. Right here. This is Industrial Diesel and Drive Line in Enfield, Connecticut. What you working on? Uh, we're doing a, we're checking if the EGR cooler's bad. So we're putting this clear tube through the coolant reservoir. See if there's any uh, bubbles in the coolant. I'm trying to figure out where the coolant's going. So. So let me go inside and see if I can catch up with my mechanic. Nice and warm in here though. There's a the man right there, but he's a little busy right now. I'll catch up with him in a minute. But that's Doug right there, that's the owner. Not the beautiful rig right here. That's a 389 right here. So guys are busy putting in a new transmission over here. So Dean, what's going on with this truck right here? This truck's getting a bearing at all. It's in an accident, rolled over. Don't know how long it was running. Obviously, if you guys ever roll a truck over, shut it off right away. There's going to be no oil in the sump. Um, drop the rods, the mains, check them out, inspected them, put them back up to torque with new ones, obviously. And just button up the bottom end, kind of pull the valve cover, check the cam bearings out. And listen, guys, I've been coming here about four years now. And one thing I would tell you when you come here, you're going to see the same faces. Right? <laughs> That's normally a pretty good indication that you're at the right shop. Yeah. You know, you don't see a bunch of new faces when you come up in here. It's always the same guy, so pay attention to that stuff. But For sure. Good guy right here, man. This is Dean. Thank you, thank you. New sleeper. Yeah, I can see this one's all twisted up. Yeah. What about the frame? This is subbed out from the body company. We checked it out about two, three months ago. Uh-huh. Okay. So I'm what you're working on over here, Frank? 6ND, lost the cylinder. Basically changes the one pack, check the oil cooler tube, make sure everything's in alignment and clear. I got it hot. Give me a hug. How you doing? What's up? And this is the first lady right here. <laughs> She probably don't want to be on camera, but she's YouTube famous now. Supposedly, it doesn't have a lot of hours on it. Okay. So that's where we're doing the one hole. The intrusion is, is on the low side. Okay. So we're going to make the decision. Cat off is your center plate if you're at two or less. So that's the decision you're facing now. So okay. Just shim it up or put it to the center plate. The head was cracked, so we're changing it. Okay. Everything else was fine. 
There it is. That's the new head that's going on it. Tell them what you're working on, Nick. Doing an in chassis. I got the liners all set in. The pistons are set in. Protrusion is set. Resealing the high pressure pump air compressor. And then we're going to do a front main seal. Front main seal. And, uh, again, guys, Nick has worked on my truck before in the past. You know, very competent mechanic. No, Nick, tell them how long you've been doing this, man. Many years. Many years. Probably before I was born. I'll be 40 soon, so. Yeah. A long time. A long time. Yeah. All the way back to the 855s. Come a long way. This one's also getting a new head. Alright, guys, listen, man. I'm going to give you all a disclaimer. When I leave that number on the screen, and that phone rings, and you can't get through, that's the guy to blame right there. <laughs> no, but listen, man, he's a busy guy, man. Y'all see all these paperwork right here? This is just some. Just some. They're busy. But uh, this is my guy, Bill, right here, man. You no, know, real good guy. Always take care of me. You no. Know, Thanks. Can't say enough about these guys, man. You know, when you see me leave all the way from North Carolina to bring my truck back to Connecticut, that's just to tell you guys, man, like, this is my shop right here. You know, you guys ask me a lot of time in my comment section, where do you get your work done on your truck? This is it. Uh, so, I'm going to leave the number. There's the first lady over there. And uh, she'll take care of you guys, man. So, be patient. That's the key, man. You know, they're busy. You know, I'll show you guys what's going on outside in the parking lot. So, normally that's a good indication, man. When you show up at a shop and it's busy, that's a good sign. That's a shop you want to work with. You know, you show up and the parking lot is empty, might want to leave it alone. And here he is, guys. Busiest man on planet Earth. Most of the time. This is a boss man right here, man. This is Doug, owner of IDD. You know, can't say enough about this guy, man. You know, like I told you guys. Well, it's the customers that allow us to keep going, so. Yeah, this is. It wasn't just me, it's you too. Listen, I tell you guys, this is the only shop I've ever taken my truck to. And I never had to take it back for the same thing. So, y'all want to get some quality work done? This is the shop you come to. Now, I'm going to warn you guys. I told y'all before, he's a busy man. Once you get in, you're in. So, I had an overhead adjustment done. So, Doug is going to explain to you guys um, the process of this adjustment. Well, what mine needed to have done anyways. This is a brand new cat head. And when you check your valve adjustments, you're checking them right here on top of the valves between this and you got a valve bridge that lays here and you're checking between the rocker arm and the valve, rocker arm itself and the valve bridge. What happens with these heads is the valves actually work themselves up inside the head. So uh -huh. it wears in the bottom, right on top of the piston, in the combustion chamber and the valve works its way up. So then your, t your clearance right over here gets tighter. There's okay. a bridge that sits across here, and right. the rock arm hits right there. Right. And you check there. So when we did yours, we went through all of them. And the exhaust ones, which right here is an exhaust, this is an exhaust, this one is, these are intakes. What happens is, as the valves work their way in, that clearance gets tighter. Then the, the hotter the engine gets, and the less clearance you have, then the valve can't close all the way. Okay. That, that's where you lose power and fuel mileage, and you can burn a valve. Yours were all absolutely just about the same. The exhausts were a little tighter than the intakes, which is pretty common. And the jake brakes were a little tight because that's on the same side. Everything adjusted up nice and nothing. We had no hang-ups and we had no no issues at all with it. It worked out good. So yeah, last adjustment I had was probably about a year, year and a half ago. So yeah, he did my last adjustment also. So like I said, guys, whenever I need anything major done on my truck, I'm driving 750 miles to bring it right here.
nothing internal. Nothing internal. This guy thought he was gonna need an engine overhaul and he doesn't need one. He's See? got a bad EGR cooler, a bad transmission cooler, something a lot less complicated than an overhaul or a lot less pricey. All right, so Doug, if somebody is wanting to get some work done on their truck, um, what type of services do you provide up here? Everything from engine overhauls to transmission overhauls to transmission replacements to engine replacements, frame rails, uh, general maintenance, any kind of external body work other than painting. And we have a good body shop that we deal with for paint. Mm -hmm. um, we do pride ourselves in the fact that we do everything from start to finish here. Nothing gets sent out. Right. Everything's in house. Um, all of the guys here have direct contact with me all day long because I'm in the shop all day. I'm not in an office. I'm not in a different building. And all the guys that work here treat the place like they own the place. This isn't, for them, this isn't just to punch the clock, come in, collect the paycheck, work on your truck, go home. They stay until they have to get the job done. And they really do treat the place like they And trust me, guys, I can attest to that. It's it's a different atmosphere. And because it's smaller, I think that we can still control that. You know, we can only hire people that all the guys get along with. Right. And we can hire people that care. And the rest of the guys do care because their name's on it, too. And also, you do have a lot of parts in-house, you know. We do. We, we have um, turbochargers for Cat Cummins, Detroit. We keep engine overhaul kits. We're an IPD distributor. Um, we have everything from IPD to CAT to Cummins to PAI. We give the customer an option whether they want to use IPD, which is aftermarket, um, or OEM. Okay. A lot of cases, the aftermarket's better than the OEM because it might be a brand new part versus a remand part. Okay. And the customer can have an option of just buying brand new parts versus, you know, having a remand part that they might not want to get from the OEM. Right. Most of the OEM parts now are remand, so you're stuck with just that. But there are options out there, and some are better, some are comparable. Mm -hmm. We try to explain to the customer down the line whether that OEM part is better or the aftermarket's better and we can provide them with pricing up front so that they don't have to guess at the end of it when they get their bill right right and they can always get a hold of me and I always know what's happening in the shop when it's when it's going on a lot of times you're on the road and you're loaded and mm -hmm. you have a breakdown you come in we find something big and you don't need to have it done right now you could do it later good news travels slow bad news travels fast <laughs> Doug, what's the deal with this one? That is customer had dashboard inoperative. None of the gauges worked. So. Oh, yeah, guys. Electrical work. They do that, too. They checked it out. They found an issue with the dash CCU. That's mm -hmm. the dash computer that controls everything. Working the dashboard, the gauges, all the switches. And it looks like the CECU is not broadcasting the signal out to the gauges, all of them anyway. Sometimes he hits a bump, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So they looked at it in their shop, and he wasn't quite sure because he didn't want to spend the $2,500 possibly or $1,700 for the CECU and waste his money on it. Because once you buy an electronic part, you can't get can't it Can't return it, right. So you're better off getting it checked out. We had a couple of test units. We keep them on the shelf so we can test it out, put one in it, and then try it out and make sure that's the problem before you go buying one. So we're going to put a used one in it and have them run it and try it out tomorrow and make sure that's the, that was the problem. His old one was, was the issue. And it wasn't just a harness that's bad or something, and then he bought a $2,000 part for no reason. There you go. It's a beautiful day cab, though. So, guys, I haven't posted any new content a few days because I've actually been out of my truck for about 11 days now. I took 10 days off over the Thanksgiving break. I dropped my truck off and I just shut it down and I spent some time with the family but 
I'm excited, man, because I ordered me some new cameras. Uh, so when I get home, my camera should be home. So you guys are going to get some really, really good footage, man. I got uh, three cameras. I'm going to mount one camera probably on the passenger side. Mirror bracket over here. I'm going to mount one camera right here. Now I'm going to some way, somehow mount one camera up top. By the reefer unit up there facing the road in front of me so you guys are gonna get some really good sound coming out of those pipes and then I'm gonna have a camera uh, mounted on my head so I'm gonna give you guys some good POV action going down the road you know so I'm gonna be honest man um, one of the reasons why I haven't posted as much as I probably should have is really my camera situation you know it was very annoying every time i had to create new content i had to make some room and free up some storage but yeah that problem is solved now man i ordered me three cameras so you guys to look forward to some really good quality content and i uh, shout out to everybody who supports my content you know when you guys watch my videos share my videos comment in the comment section like my videos, that's how you support the content. You know, I didn't have to come up out my pocket and spend a dollar for those cameras. You know, that's all paid for by my YouTube revenue. So, to all you guys who support my content, appreciate you guys, and uh, thank you guys.